All right, welcome back. Let's model the rest of the buttons. I'm going to delete my history by going File, uh, Delete All By Type, and History. I'm going to save this again. And I want to model the Select and Start button, but first I see that I have a gnarly end gone and I need to continue this edge all the way across. So with my multi-cut tool, I'll select that vertex, hold control and shift for a 90 degree angle, and then I'm going to carry this edge all the way to the other end. This one wasn't letting me do control and shift. So I'm going to just drop an edge, select it, and then I'll vertex snap it to this edge. Next, I'll create a cube, and I'm going to scale it down. Move it to the center of the select button, and I'm going to scale it to size. Move it in the right spot. I'll hit Control One to isolate. I'm going to delete this back. Or I'm going to move this back face in, and then uh, I'm going to delete it. Scale the height to be closer. I'll select these corner edges. And then hit bevel. And I'm going to play with the fraction and segment number until I get the shape close to the actual button. Let's bevel these outside edges. I'm going to increase the segment number. And then I'm going to go ahead and use the multi cut tool to clean up this front here so I have quads. That's good for now. I'll hit Control D in object mode and duplicate this and move it over to the start button area. I'll hit control one to get out of isolate mode in my perspective view. Let's do a smooth preview test by hitting three. Let's go ahead and make the frame for the B and A button. So I'll create a cube. I'll scale it to size. Control one to isolate and select this back face, move it in, delete it. Select the corner edges and bevel them. And then I will use fraction and segments to get that shape correct. I'm going to move the pivot to the front edge by hitting D and vertex snapping it. And then I just want to align it up with these frames so they all, you know, stick out of the face at the same, uh, same distance. That's not strictly necessary. I'm going to select all these exterior edges 
and bevel them and decrease the fraction, increase the segments to two. And then I'm going to go ahead and clean this up by creating quads instead of one big end gone. I'll drop edge loops in the center, grab that middle vertex, bevel it, circularize it through edit mesh circularize, add two divisions, scale it up to match the hole for the button. I want to make sure I don't overlap vertices doing this, so I got to be careful. And then I'll go ahead and clean this up like we have in the past. So I'll go through the process of connecting these verts, and then when I'm done with that, um, I will straighten all the edges using the scale tool and vertex, vertex snap technique that I've been doing this whole time. Let's give these vertices some breathing room by nudging them up. A lot of the time, this sort of work of straightening vertices and snapping them isn't necessary, but it's a good habit to get into just to sort of organize your edge flow. It's going to make your model look a lot better um, and bring you co it'll bring you a lot closer to like portfolio quality work, right? If you want to show off the wireframe of a model, it should look nice and organized and make sense. Select all these middle faces, extrude them in. I'm going to I need to select this front panel and create um, a hole in it, but before I do that, I'm going to select the object, the B frame, hit control D to duplicate it and then move it to the right. Next I'll create some extra edges on the front panel so that I can delete the faces of that front panel in the same fashion that we did with the D-pad. move these edges down so I can just use this edge. I'll delete these. There's some hard edges in here so I'm just going to go to edge mode, select all these interior edges on um, both of them and then go to mesh display soften edge When I smooth this it should fix itself anyway when I get to that point, but it's a little distracting to me Next let's go ahead and create the buttons. I'm going to create a cylinder scale it down and then I will rotate it 90 degrees in the Z or in the X I'm going to open up the inputs and increase the subdivision caps to 6. Next I will select this outer edge and bevel it. Give it a segment and play with the fraction a little bit. I'm going to go to face and select all these middle faces. And then I'm going to hit B on the keyboard which will open up soft select. And while holding B I'll click and drag to change the brush size. I want to 
increase the brush size so that when I move these faces, it will impact the faces around it. You can also access soft select um, through the menu in the modeling toolkit. It's a little checkbox and you can control the fall off there as well. If you hit B, it toggles it on and off. I'm going to select these middle back faces here and then hit um, once I have these middle back faces, I'll hold shift and hit period to grow the selection until I have the whole back and delete it. Let's scale this down to size. And move it out. And I'm looking at the top reference to get sort of the distance that it should be out. I'm going to vertex snap this to this center vertex just to make sure it's perfectly in the middle. Bring this vertex here and then I'll uh, use vertex snap to bring it out to the same you know, distance that the D-pad is out. I'll move the vertex again to the center and then I'll scale it down. Remember to unlock the, the pivot. I think I keep saying vertex. To unlock the pivot like I was doing, you hit D on the keyboard, and then to lock it in place after you've moved it, you can hit D again. All right, I'm gonna hit Control D to duplicate it, and then I'll vertex snap this one over to the center of the A button frame. And I'll just rotate around and make sure this is looking good. I think these indentations are too strong, so I'm gonna select these middle faces, hit B, adjust my fall off for the soft select and then just kind of pull them out a little bit to be a little less intense and I think that will be good In the next video we're going to prepare this model to be smoothed uh, so that it will be our high poly we'll see you there